everybody, Basil Ray from Vape Blink here, and today we're going to take a look at the iHybrid, available from iHybridMods.com. So this is a new, uh, essentially it's a hybrid device. So when we say hybrid, we mean it's a rebuildable atomizer, tank-based unit, and a battery holder uh, switch. You know, it, it's a complete package device. So a device like this would realistically be the only thing you'd need to get you by. Uh, it is all machined out of aluminum, so all these parts here that you see are aluminum, and this is essentially everything you get when you order one. Uh, they go for $225 from iHybridMods.com. So uh, let's take a look at, at it here. Uh, a couple of things you're going to get, you're going to get two different battery tubes, one for 18 350 length batteries. Set that aside because that's of little to no use uh, for me. Then you're going to get an 18650 length battery tube. Uh, you'll also get the button switch assembly here, which uh, has the iHybrid logo stamped onto the bottom, and it is a locking switch. So uh, similar to you know some of these other uh, tube or, or bottom firing button devices. This ring will lock the button in place for you. Um, it comes out of the box with a spring. Um, there is, I think, a newer spring coming out. There's also magnets for this button that are available. Uh, this is gonna screw in, and depressing the button is going to press forward this brass screw. And as you can see here, that is going to be what makes contact with the bottom of your battery. So we'll go ahead and uh, screw this to the battery tube. These tubes, are machined specifically so that you have uh, two different ends. One end for the atomizer tank, which we'll show off here in a minute, and the other one for the actual battery, uh, or sorry, the button switch. So on the 18352, which I have here on the left, you can see the walls look a little bit thicker, and they look a little bit thinner here on the top. This thinner end is where the tank is gonna go. The thicker end here, like this on the left, is where the battery, uh, or sorry, the button is gonna go. So take the thicker end and we will uh, thread on our button. If I can do this this far away from my face, it would be awesome. Come on. And it's nothing with the threads. The threads are machined well. There we go. Just a matter of getting it started. Um, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to do. I've got the camera here kind of in front of me blocking everything. So uh, one thing you'll notice with or without the battery uh, right now, the switch is a little bit wobbly. That is due to the spring that is currently in here. Uh, there is a newer version of the spring uh, that is coming out. Uh, I think it's it's out. Um, so if you get it now, you should get the newer version of the spring, which should tighten this up. And uh, there also are magnets available uh, from iHybridMods.com if you prefer your battery uh, that way. Now, when we get up here to where the tank is going to go in, this is where we start getting to the magic. So what we have here is a Genesis-style atomizer tank. And when we say Genesis-style, we are talking about using stainless steel mesh in place of uh, the more traditional uh, silica or ceramic type wicking. So I have this all set up, um, and I've been using this for almost two weeks with this coil and mesh, and uh, it's working like a champ. I don't really want to undo it. And there's lots of videos out there uh, on different ways. There's kind of a, a couple different methods of rolling the mesh and uh, wrapping your coil. Uh, this is the most fiddly part of using this device. Once you get this set up and working, it is an absolute dream to vape. Um, and uh, you know this is kind of the downfall of a lot of rebuildables, but especially these Genesis atomizers. Getting the stainless steel oxidized just right, but more importantly, getting the coil on here so you don't have any hot spots because that is just going to burn the hell out of your liquid and it's going to be a pretty awful vape and a pretty awful time so uh, from the top down here I can't find it on my desk you do get an allen wrench with this uh, so these are allen wrenchable screws uh, you would loosen the screws um, you know drop your wire in wrap it on the post or pull it under the post pull it tight and uh, then use the allen wrenches to put it back down if the demand is there, we can certainly look at doing a video where we set up a Genesis-style atomizer uh, on camera. Uh, so at the top here, you also are going to have a small hole for air, which is uh, almost directly across the tank from the wick hole. Then you have the center post here and the lower post, uh, which allows you to really wrap it upwards and uh, makes it nice and neat and easy to do. Uh, this is, without a doubt, the best 
set up, um, or the easiest to set up, I guess, is the proper way of saying it, Genesis Atomizer I've had. I've had the Scuba, scuba Gen, the Genesis, the Line, uh, the Atom Mini from SNS Mods. Um, I had a, a home built, a couple different homemade ones, and uh, I've never been able to have the success that I've had here in terms of setting those up consistently. I set this up a few times when I got it, and uh, it's it's been really easy to do. The other real nice feature about this is the tank sleeve, uh, which has a lowercase i machined into it on both sides, so you can see here, you can see all the way through. Uh, this kind of serves a couple different purposes. You can see here. Uh, it looks quite shiny inside, and you may even be able to make out, there it is, you can see there's some liquid build up here. So this is kind of a, a couple purposes. One, it looks sort of cool. Two, it's going to hold any leaks over the top of the tank that you have. And uh, three, it's going to help you line everything up. Uh, and four, I guess, really, it probably should have been three, but uh, four, it's going to help you hold the top cap in place. So once you put this in here, one side of the eye is going to directly expose where your uh, wrapped up mesh is going to go right down the middle here. So you can always see that, which is going to help because you need a top cap on this thing if you want to vape it. And lo and behold, you get a top cap with an air hole uh, bored out into it. And this, you are going to want to just stick on here. And there is an O-ring inside here. Um, I could take off the sheath, but I'm pretty lazy to show you that. And that's what's really going to secure this. So the nice thing about this tank cover is that it's really going to give you a bit of extra stability uh, when this cover goes on. That's one of the big gripes I've had about some of the, the Genesis-style atomizers where the tank body has an O-ring to secure on a top cap. Um, one, it doesn't seal properly, and that's a big complaint I have with these. But more importantly, too, it's really easy to pop off. So this seals it up and really holds it in place. It's not going to wobble off. Now, you can, of course, adjust where this, this air hole is in the top cap. The farther away from the wick that you move this, the uh, more intense the throat hit and the lower the vapor. So generally, you want to have this lined up right even with this eye where your uh, mesh is lined up here. That's going to give you the best air draw right at the coil. So air is going to come in here and up and out. So it's going to give you the best vapor production, probably the best flavor production. Um, that extra airflow may diminish a bit your throat hit. So if you're a throat hit fanatic and you're okay sacrificing vapor, you can certainly spin this away a bit. So this is going to uh, thread on to the top end of your battery sleeve. And there we go. So you thread this up and you're essentially ready to rock and roll. So this is the 18650 length tube. It will hold an 18650 sized battery absolutely perfectly. Uh, it will allow you to use a kick with an 18490, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. There is one slight problem with the way that lines up. So the other thing that I wanted to point out here is that uh, the way this is set up, when you have the button locked and you set it down with this particular spring that I have in here, rock solid. When you open up this button for firing and set it down, uh, things get, as you can see here, pretty wobbly. Uh, there's not enough weight behind this for it to actually fire the device. Uh, you can set it up and leave it there pretty much indefinitely in my experience. Um, but it, it is going to be a bit wobbly, and that is due to the spring. The only other concern I have, this apparently will uh, allow for venting from the bottom of the switch. So when you depress this, you're relying on this being your vent. As you can see, that seals up pretty tight. Um, according to Faceless, the guy who makes these uh, on ECF and some posts, he said it will vent out through the bottom here. Um, that, that's the way it's supposedly designed. I have some personal doubts about that, uh, but I, you know, I, I'm very careful with the batteries that I use. So we'll talk more about that when we go up top. But just real quick, let me show you uh, how the kick fits in here. And you can see the only other little concern that I have with this. Uh, also, while I'm unscrewing this, there are other colored battery tubes and tank sleeves available. I know for sure there are uh, green, red, and black that you can get. Um, those are extra add-on options if you really want to customize or personalize it. So here, uh, you've got a brass screw at top where your uh, positive battery terminal or the top end of your kick would go. The only thing you have to do is kind of take this little loop uh, spring here. Where is it? There it is, on the kick 
and I kind of just tuck it in, depress it down, and this uh, conceals up pretty well here in the top cap. Then, take off this switch. This is how I put it together, and this is a uh, kind of standard configuration for me, so I kick this up to 10 watts uh, when I use it. That is pretty much exclusively how I've used it. First few hours, just until I was sure the coil was broken in, I did just use it with an 18650. After that, I was ready to rock and roll. So. Uh, this is an AW18490, <laughs> believe it or not. At some point, the little AW logo came off, uh, along with a chunk of the bottom of the battery covering. So, battery's going to slip in, and this is going to thread on here. And the only other concern is that you're going to have just a little bit of a gap here. Now, you can kind of minimize that a bit by adjusting where each one is set so if you release the top of this a little bit you can kind of even it out in there it's a little bit less noticeable the other thing you can do is you can back off the top of the battery tube screw the switch in tight and uh, leave the gap here you could certainly drop in some sort of o-ring there and faceless uh, actually says that you know if you throw a clear o-ring in there it apparently looks pretty sharp um, so the only other thing that i can even think of mentioning right now is that just to make this easy when the tank is very full or you leave it on its side for too long, come on, there we go. Um, one thing is gonna happen, that's a little bit of leakage down the side. So if you look here, uh, you can see that it's essentially almost recessed all the way around. Um, and that's just where the sheath covers over the top of the tank, which uh, I don't remember if I mentioned, the tank is actually fused quartz. So it is essentially glass. Um, from the air hole or just excess juice from the wick will drip down into this recess and it's going to kind of generally get held up by the tank sleeve <clears throat> excuse me but over time uh, you may get some juice build up that will start to kind of trickle out the bottom of these eye cuts on both sides uh, it's, it's not difficult to fix you essentially take the sleeve off wipe down the tank wipe down the inside of the sleeve and uh, put it all back together there's really not a lot you can do with it, with any Genesis style device, you're generally going to need to leave it standing up as much as possible. But uh, just something you got to point out. So I'm going to put this whole mess back together here and we'll go up top uh, for some final thoughts, pricing, and gratuitous vapor shots. So iHybrid, again, available from iHybridMods.com, is going to retail for $225. That's going to get you everything you saw in the up close. So both the 18350, 18650 battery sleeves. Would love to see one of those tossed out to bring the price down and give people that option. It's going to get you the tank. Obviously, the, the whole tank set up, the tank sleeve, the top cap, the button. So it's going to get you the device. And uh, it's going to give you a little bit of optioning around what battery size you want to use. The only thing that I really worry about with this, again, as I said before, is the venting of this switch. Uh, I've got to believe that this just isn't adequate to vent properly. That being said, I really like the device and I'm taking a couple extra precautions. Um, I only use an XTAR charger, which, you know, they're incredibly efficient, intelligent chargers. Um, and they're probably the safest ones you can go out and currently get right now to begin with. I'm constantly metering my batteries both before they go on the charger to make sure they're not discharged past 3.3 volts and again when they come off the charger to make sure that they're not above 4.2 volts so um, you would be wise I think to put in uh, either uh, you know uh, the, the the two cent fuse or the preference I think here would obviously be the holocron labs short stop uh, which would go a long way to giving you a reusable way to protect yourself from a potential runaway catastrophic battery failure which this is soft aluminum. I mean, uh, all aluminum is soft, uh, especially when you compare it to something like stainless steel, right? So it's going to give you that extra bit of protection. So you really need to take some other precaution. I have the kick in here, which has some safety mechanisms built in to prevent, you know, a runaway battery. So that's kind of the way between that and my battery safety that I practice regularly. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm off the soapbox now. This is easily the best Genesis atomizer of any kind I've ever had, whether it was a hybrid style like the Genesis, which I did have one of the early aluminum ones and just didn't care for it, or you know I had the line, I uh, had the scuba gen. Uh, this is just the easiest one that I found to set up, pick up, and vape. So I've got 325 mesh wrapped up in here, DIY tobacco liquid, it's 70 PG, 30 VG, vapes like a champ i can absolutely pick this up and chain vape on it without getting a dry hit 
Um, you are going to get potentially some leakage, remember, if you're leaving this on its side a lot or at an angle or you're constantly running the tank really full, it's just naturally going to leak out a bit. The tank cover is going to pick up most of that and uh, you'll know it's time to give it a wipe down when it starts to kind of leak out here around the bottom of the eye cuts. So uh, there are um, some replacement pieces, different screws that are available to kind of adjust the draw a bit, uh, magnets for the button. You can get uh, colored uh, tank sleeves and battery tubes as well. There's also a kick tube, which I think is to allow you to use the 18650 plus the kick. Uh, so it should be a little bit longer than the 18650 tube style. Like I said, this has been the most pleasant Genesis experience I've had to date. This is the first one that's actually seen any regular use. <laughs> Every other Genesis atomizer I've used for like a day to no more than three days and pretty much taken and thrown against the wall. There have been a couple that I've had where I, I filled them up just absolutely despite six to eight different coil wraps, cannot get it to wrap up without the hot spots and get it, excuse me, to a point where I can actually use it. And I've just turned around and sold them off, given them away, sent them back, what have you. So for my money... This is a pretty fantastic mod. I do want to see some sort of milling something or something to just kind of show that this is going to vent properly in case there is some sort of catastrophic runaway failure. I'm not talking about the battery just getting hot. I'm talking about the battery completely buckling and venting and causing an actual explosion. Um, Google uh, or go to YouTube and you know search around for battery explosions etc and you're going to find some videos and you'll see exactly what happens in complete catastrophic failure which is really rare uh, but there's a few safety things you can drop in in addition to whatever potential venting is or isn't here i think um, that are going to allow you to have a really nice vaping experience with this so that's what i've got this video is getting incredibly long let's go ahead and wrap it up vape link monday nights 9 30 eastern standard time uh, myself Kazakhan, Sensefield, would love to see you guys swing by, contribute to the show. Um, feel free to PM us with any ideas. Basal phone, 612-293-6405. Twitter.com slash Basil Ray or at Basil Ray. Facebook.com slash Basil Ray. Uh, I end every video this way because until I see you the next time, hopefully at VaporCon, wink, wink, please, by all means, take care. Body safe to show.